Hello and welcome to the Fostering Success Michigan webinar series, Champions of the Domains. My name is Maddie Day and I'm the Director of Outreach and Training with the Center for Fostering Success at Western Michigan University. Today I have with me Bree Simmons, FSM Student Ambassador and CETA Scholar from Western Michigan University. Hi Bree. Hi Maddie. Bree will be joining us for this webinar and several other webinars in the future, so you can look forward to her participation on this webinar and future webinars. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that attendees are in listen-only mode. You can ask questions using the chat or questions feature in your sidebar. If you have technical difficulties, please feel free to contact the Citrix team at the number that you see on your screen. As always, a recording of the webinar will be available on the Fostering Success Michigan resource library following this broadcast. I'd like to say a special thank you to our funders, the Kresge Foundation, the Havermill Foundation, and Western Michigan University for their generous support of the Fostering Success Michigan statewide initiative. So today's education for me. Uh, and our champion for today is the CETA Scholars Program at Western Michigan University. Some goals for this webinar are going to be to explain why this domain is important. We're going to highlight innovative practices used to support students in this domain. And we're also going to provide resources related to this domain. Um, just a reminder, don't forget to use the questions or the chat feature during the presentation to interact with us. We really want to hear from you. Now I'd like to welcome our special guest from the CETA Scholars Program, Ronica Hamilton, the director of the CETA Scholars Program. Hi, Ronica. Hi, Mary. Hi, Bree. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us today. So as our listeners may remember, last year we uh, had a webinar series focused on the seven life domains. And it was such a success that we decided to continue this series and spend another year focused on the seven life domains. So each month, we will be taking time to focus on one of the seven life domains. This will be highlighted through our webinar series, through our podcasts, and our Fostering Success Michigan Community Collaborative events. As a refresher, the seven life domains comes from the Casey Family Program's It's My Life Framework. This framework offers seven life domains as a way to organize, understand, and develop a response to the complexity of the lived experience for young adults with experience in foster care. So again, this month is the education domain, and I do want to just chat with you about what the education domain is, um, and that's going to be defined as experiences and resources that shape our learning experience, and particularly for students ages 12 to 25 who have or are experiencing foster care. But within this domain, Foster Success Michigan includes middle school, high school, community colleges, skilled trades, and certificate programs. Wonderful. And just as a reminder, you can revisit the FSM Seven Life Domains webinar toolkits and the education toolkit on the Fostering Success Michigan um, library at fosteringsuccessmichigan.com for more information. So now we are going to invite our champion, Ronica Hamilton, to share a little bit about this domain from her perspective. So our first question for you, Ronica, is what are the most significant challenges students face in this domain? So it really has to do with skill, right? And so part of that is um, accessing resources that are available to support students in this skill. Resources within the program, but also resources um, within the, the college. Uh, and then there are skills that come into play, skills like time management, um, planning ahead, following through, and um, really just kind of developing those skills and then employing those skills. And then one of the things that can sometimes really kind of take students out really have to has to do with um, the stress that can really overwhelm a student when they're not tapping into those skills or developing those skills or accessing those resources. Uh, because then what happens is the, the coursework really begins to feel and become pretty overwhelming and the demands that um, what, what seem like demands are, that are being placed on students by the professors. And so that kind of onsets some stress, which can then kind of um, st 
stumble really into some of the other mental health challenges that students might be facing. Like it can begin to impact depression and um, anxiety at really high rates. And so those things really are some of the challenges, the significant challenges that students face as it relates to this domain. Wonderful. So what I hear from you is really that um, the within the education domain, there are a number of skills that students need to be successful in this domain, um, particularly in the post-secondary side, um, the need for um, managing your own time, planning ahead, uh, probably, you know, tasks that come down to managing a reading schedule with your textbooks, mm -hmm. when you're going to meet your professors, making sure that you have all of your tests noted. Um, mm -hmm. that these are very concrete skills that if students um, do not arrive equipped with these skills, they then may run into other challenges, um, and these challenges then can be exacerbated by stress that students experience, and then sort of other parts of the life domains that we see. So you right. talked about, um, you know, having uh, the, the stress that may come from, um, you know, sort of the, the physical stress or emotional stress of not having the skills to manage your um, education tasks, and then how that then may um, trigger some mental health issues, um, and then that may lead to um, pulling away from your community, your support systems, et cetera. So I think it's really helpful to hear how, one, every domain is connected to every other domain. We yes. know this. Um, but also, for those of us that are supporting students in the education arena and see education as the central domain, how really quickly um, kind of the dominoes can fall mm -hmm. if we're not attending to those really core skills in the education domain. Um, so I, that's super, super helpful to hear. Um, and our next question is going to be what kind of bit of practices or strategies do you use to address the challenges that we just discussed? Yeah. So, you know, number one um, approach to address this is coaching, right? And so coaching has been put in place for several years now. So, and there's a full coach training program that has been developed. And so coaching is definitely one of, one of the, the um, interventions put in place. And what coaching does is really help with problem solving. So as I mentioned prior to was um, the skill, right? So helping students to um, develop those skills, increase those skills, improve those skills. And so coaching helps with that a whole lot. Um, teaching to those skills, uh, addressing some of the gaps that students might have as it relates to employing those skills. Um, so coaching is definitely one of our greatest tools. We also um, have First Year Seminar at our university. And so what First Year Seminar does, well, what we get to do with First Year Seminar is we get to teach a section of that for incoming CETA scholars. And so we get to use that um, to teach some of those skills soon as students get to, to campus. So first year students are getting those skills right during that first year seminar course. Um, then we also do some planning with students. So part of the planning that we do with students is their graduation plan. So they come in the door with, when am I gonna walk out the door, walk across the stage and out the door, right? And so there's a lot of teaching to and around that. And so there's hopefully encouragement on you know, I'm, this is why I'm here, my progress toward graduation, and just kind of the movement to graduation. And so just really kind of teaching to that plan. This is the plan that set out before me. And so teaching and building skill to, to the end, to, the, to that meet, to that end. Training. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any specific things in the coaching training that you can directly impact um, students while they be successful in this domain? Yeah, I would say, so the, the, the relationship with students, um, with the students and the coach, we call that a partnership. And so I think we use that very much as a tool. And so in that partnership, students are really able to um, see professionals in a relationship differently than they have perhaps and hopefully experienced with maybe their caseworker. So this is a partnership. So this is in a relationship where students are being told what to do, but they're really being taught and partnered um, to move through to graduation. Is there 
any difference between coaching versus a mentorship? Or what does that look like? Yeah. So coaching, um, yeah, we get asked this a lot, right? Coaching and mentorship. So coaching, again, is more of that partnership and, and it's kind of instruction and guiding and, and it's a two-way street. So the student is learning from the coach, but the coach is also learning from the student. So we're learning as coaches from the student how to support students who are in college who have experienced foster care. And the students are hopefully learning from their coach how to be successful in college, how to be successful and thrive in career. Right. Mentorship is really kind of this is a, a skill or craft um, that I have mastered. Let me show you how to master it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you, you have a mentor teacher. You want to be a teacher. And so you're learning how this teacher connects with students and how she does her job, he or she. And, and so that's one of the differences because it's it's really we're both learning from each other. There's reciprocity. There's partnership. You know, we're, we, there's a mutual benefit in our connection and our relationship versus in mentoring, you're just kind of learning from me. Make sense? Yes, makes sense. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on the question that often it comes up. Mm. And, um, you know, for many people that uh, probably have heard about the Seed of Scholars program or any of our campus programs, mm. uh, I do think it's important that they know that. Um, the, the coach model that we use here at Western um, and across the campus coach programs in Michigan was really developed in partnership with students mm -hmm. um, through the learning process. And so even from the beginning, this intervention that you talk about is being used is something that comes from the shared learning with students. So it's built in all the way. And I think that's one of the pieces that makes it so innovative um, really so effective. <clears throat> yes. So our next question um, is, is really about self-care. This is something that um, we don't often think about, but uh, as the team and I were sitting down and I was speaking with Bree and our other <laughs> FSM student ambassador, Brandon, one of the pieces that they talked about is how important self-care is as a student making their way to and through college and into career. And so we, we really wanted to present this question uh, to hear about the types of self-care that you encourage for success in the education domain. Um, and just, you know, your, your thoughts on that. Yeah. I like that question. That's a really good question because, you know, as professionals, we talk about the need for self-care. And so I think it's a really good time for students to start learning it because, I mean, going to college, being in college and going to classes is right now their full-time job, right? And so <clears throat> um, some of the things that we talk about with students as it relates to self-care is pacing yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so pacing yourself, so knowing when you're studying, when you're taking classes, when you want to get involved in all the extracurriculars, when do you, when do you need a break? Even throughout the day, throughout the week, what does your, when, when does your body tell you you need a break? How frequently? So when studying, do you need to take a break every 10 minutes, 15 minutes after reading something? How, how much is your brain really absorbing if you're sitting down like cramming, right? And cramming for hours and just reading for hours. What are you really absorbing versus taking a brain break, really? So pacing yourself, knowing knowing what your what you need, what your brain needs, what what needs, what your body needs, and so on, and then also learning now how to say no, how to say no to extracurricular activities, how to say no to um, outings and activities with friends that are really going to be a distraction or take you away from what you need to be doing as it relates to performing well in the classroom. So saying no. And then friends, choosing your friends carefully. I'm sure students have heard this time and time and time, time and time again growing up. Um, but really, that really does make a big difference in your self-care. So are you choosing friends that are going to really support you and no, I can't do it today, I have a test tomorrow. Or are you choosing friends that are going to, no, no, you can study for that test right before the class, or I'll give you my exam. You can use it. I mean, so what kind of friends are you choosing, and how are they supporting you in your academic career? And so I think that's a really important one. And then lastly, um, what we often say, and I do now as a professional, is reward yourself. 
<laughs> so make sure that you build in some rewards. Whatever those rewards are, it doesn't always have to cost money. Your reward could be a nap. <laughs> I often hear about students talking about how sleepy they are or how tired they are. So maybe you need to reward yourself with a nap. So study, read for 10 minutes, and go take a nap for 30 minutes. Whatever you need to do to, to kind of restore. Um, I love office supplies, so I might buy myself a new pen. You know, but whatever you need to do to build in some reward for yourself. Awesome. I, I was really curious what um, what what kind of response you were going to have to this question because I think it's a little bit more nuanced than you know mm -hmm. sort of we think about. We kind of think about oh self care, go take a walk, go do whatever, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily work for every domain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think with education, the the um, types of self-care that you talked about reinforce the role of education, right. the success of education, right? And so, you know, talking about pacing yourself, making sure that, you know, you're not burning yourself right out exactly. at the end, um, making sure that you're, you know, doing the, you know, the work, the play, the rest kind of all in tandem. Mm -hmm. um, learning how to say no, you know, I think that that's something that uh, I would say for, uh, for every professional and supportive adult out there, um, we probably are, are needing to practice this a little bit better. Um, but we also should really be mindful of how many asks we have on our students. Yeah. And that's something that we talk here in FSM a lot about. Um, I know our campus support programs, you know, often will say, listen, you know, our students' priority is school right now. So, yes, we would love for them to uh, take advantage of that leadership opportunity to participate in this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we really have to make sure that we're setting them up for success. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of the saying no is making sure that you're saying yes to, to school. Right. Right. And yes. so knowing that if you are not in school, then the benefits that come with the opportunities within school go away. Yes. And so if you are saying yes to school and no to some of these other things, you're really not missing out. You're actually creating space for the, the focus that you're here to work on. Yes. Um, okay. And then you talked about, you know, choosing your friends carefully. And that, you know, kind of speaks to the... Um, supportive relationships domain, mm -hmm. even some of the identity domain where, you know, young people in high school and college, they're doing the work of learning who they are as well as mm -hmm. taking in and learning about who they want to be. And so, you know, really being clear that the people that you surround yourself with are part of who you will become. Yes. And so, you know, if you are working toward being a teacher, being a doctor, being a lawyer, but the peers that you hang out with are not peers that are supportive of those things, there's going to be some conflict. There's going to be some imbalance. Mm -hmm. What may take you away from success in education? Um, and then lastly, I love the reward yourself. Um, I too love office supplies. Uh, and probably buy too many of them. Um, uh, everybody at FSM knows that I have a special pen. Um, but I think that it's really important to think about the small things. We often think about rewards as a big thing. Oh, I'm going to go on a trip. Oh, I'm going to, you know, uh, go, um, you know, to, to a theme park. Oh, I'm going to go out to dinner or whatever. And those are great, and they can be those big things, but I think scalable, small rewards. You know, hey, did an awesome job this week with getting all my readings on, on time. You know, okay, buy that extra coffee for yourself. Um, you know, treat yourself to a new pen, a new notebook, what have you. Um, those kinds of things that can be smaller that then kind of reinforce um, the the work that you're doing. I always yes. think if you can if you can work with things that you enjoy. So if you have a nice notebook that you like, pens that you like, um, you know, have the earbuds that you really like, mm -hmm. you're you're more likely to go back to that space yeah. of plugging in and doing your work. And so for our students, you know, making sure that their backpacks and their books and their you know all of that really reinforce like learning, being present in school is where I want to be. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. I just think it's so many great, great ideas. And I think that they're really tangible things for our students who are listening, for our supportive adults, for our professionals to pass on to our students. Great segue into our next question. Um, so our next 
question is, Veronica, could you give us one piece of advice for students, professionals, and supportive of us um, to increase success in this domain? Yeah. So for students, in addition to um, the things that we've talked about in terms of building skill, right, time management, planning ahead, asking for help, those sorts of things, I would say, go to class. <laughs> <laughs> right? Seems simple. But sometimes, you know, that can be a challenge. So if there are things getting in the way of you attending class, make sure you're meeting with your coach or a supportive adult or professional that can help you address those things because getting to class really is half the battle in terms of being successful in college. I'd also offer to students um, and encourage students to sit in front or near the front, right? And so the, the some, some of the distractions off to the side or in the back are impacting you and your ability to um, focus on what the professor is talking about. And then get to know your professor. So visit your professor's office hours. Make yourself known and visible to your professor so that you're not just a name or student ID number on your professor's roster. Make yourself known to your professor. So again, visiting your professor's office hours checking in with your professor, sending your professor an email when you can't report to class so your professor knows that you're serious about your education and you really want to be there, but this is what's in the way of that right now. So that communication with, with, with your professor so they're aware. And in terms of um, professionals and supportive adults, um, hold students accountable. And hold students accountable through things like um, progress reports. So getting you taking the initiative, your department taking the initiative to get the feedback and from the students' professors so that you know actually what's going on. Because the students will tell you a part of the story, the professors will tell you the rest of the story. And so putting those together to help the student um, understand where they are really is very important because sometimes students aren't going to their professor asking for the information that we're gathering um, via the progress courses. I think it's really important that professionals get that information for, and, and, and communicate it with students, share it with students, go over it and review it with students. Uh, in addition, professionals just checking in with students about their sort of classroom uh, behavior, their, their college attendance and behavior. And for supportive adults, students love for you to check in with them, right, and ask them, so how are you? How was your day? How was class? Um, have you, do you have any tests coming up? Any major projects? Students really, students that I work with who've experienced foster care, when they're not hearing that, or if they have a professional adult in their life or a supportive adult in their life, I'm sorry, and they're not hearing that from that person, that it's kind of like a question mark for them. Like, why? They're not even asking me about. So students really want that accountability on some level, and they really want to know that the supportive adult is supporting them through their education and asking and following through with them. So I would encourage that. I want to go back and talk about this idea of going to class. It seems so simple, yet all of us struggle with it, including me. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to go back and talk about that. I think it's more of also going to class and being present. I can go in a classroom and just sit and listen, um, but actively taking notes, asking questions, like you said, sitting in the front. Um, can you talk about some more strategies for students to stay active in class, like um, maybe something that you use when you were in school or something that you see with your students? Um, just can you give us some examples of? No, Brie, those were really good. You're right. Yeah. So being present, yes, yes, you talked about that, taking notes and so on. And so being intentional, you know, that reading that you do before you go to class mm -hmm. um, or should do before you go to class, <laughs> coming to class, having prepared, right? So doing the reading, but then maybe having some questions. If there's some spot spots for you, raising your hand a couple of times and having questions, right, that you're asking so that you are able to engage and be fully present in the course. And then even asking questions. I mean, there's a whole syllabus, right? So if there's questions that you have on an upcoming homework assignment or paper or project that you're unclear about, because hopefully you started it a few weeks in advance, um, that you're asking questions and clarity uh, around those as well. I think the syllabus also touched on the really big part of going across and being present is knowing that syllabus and looking at the syllabus for the events or the projects that you have coming up. Yes. Wonderful. Um, so I have one question, and um, for everyone out there, 
please be sure to send us your questions, use the chat or questions feature. We want to hear from you. Um, we have lots of time and so, you know, we can uh, answer lots of questions and really get some information. One of the, so you talked about this idea of accountability and you mm -hmm. talked about checking in. Um, and what was funny is I kind of had this immediate like, oh yeah, it does feel so good to have somebody kind of, you know, ask about what's going on, know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But there's also that balance of not being, um, not being like overbearing about it or not mm -hmm. being like not asking about questions that you actually don't need to know about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also just, I think, being mindful that when we are engaging our students, um, they may not have had an experience where when people ask them, so what's going on, that it doesn't mean you're in trouble, so I want to hear about what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a little bit about kind of the perspective that you come at, you know, this idea of accountability and checking in and how you communicate that to students um, how you reinforce sort of the, I, I think it sort of speaks to the interdependent relationship mm -hmm. that is inherent um, in coaching, but kind of how that works so that it's not a, I'm checking up on you. Mm -hmm. I think there's, it's, it's checking up versus, or it's checking in versus checking up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's how you approach it initially. Right. And so, so our approach is generally, you know, so, how are you doing? Just kind of a general, you know, hello, how are you doing kind of thing. But then it's also the way that you frame your, your questions, right? And so it's first, I think, leading with some praise of the student. You know, you were really good at, I remember when you were in high school or when you were a freshman or when you lived with me, how, how are you utilizing that skill now? You know, it could be something as simple as that. It's kind of the, fr and the framing of it is going to be really important. So it does sound more like a checking in versus a checking up, mm -hmm. right? And then um, if you're aware and familiar of, with the student's sort of syllabus and class schedule and um, projects and tests and things like that, it's like, I remember last week when we had dinner, you told me you had a test next week, this week. How did that test go? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you feel about that test? And so it's really kind of also really using the check-ins to see how they're feeling about college. And so, so it's not just about how they did or how they're doing, but how they're feeling in terms of their sense of belonging even. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think that sense of belonging piece is so crucial, right? So we know that if students don't feel like they belong yeah. um, on campus, and I think this is true in many mm -hmm. places in the community, um, I think this can also be said about feeling like you belong in high school or in, you know, a, a certificate program, mm -hmm. um, you know, technical program. You may have interest, but if you don't feel like you belong, you're not going to stay. Yeah. And so really checking in on that sense of belonging and then working with a student to reinforce that is, is such a great um, focus, I think. Yeah. So now we have some time for questions. Uh, we definitely want to hear from all of you. Any questions that you may have? Um, we have a couple here. Uh, let's see. So one of the questions um, we have is how can students, professionals, supportive adults, um, how can they find more resources about, about supporting success in the education domain? students are um, involved in any particular program at a college, so it might be calling and checking with that, that program. Um, but in addition to that, um, with the academic Office of Academic Affairs, learn about which uh, programs, support programs are on campus for students. If you have a student that is, you know, a student in a particular population, when you call Academic Affairs asking that, um, I think would be really helpful. And then if you are, you know, familiar with other foster parents or other supportive adults, so in some of it, it will be networking for the, the, the supportive adult to do some networking, right? When you have a student um, or a young person that's in college, networking and figuring it out. You know, I think the, the networking is really key. And we say this all the time with FSM, you know, it's one part what you know, but it's also about who you know. Absolutely. And the who is the part that I think we can forget or we can get too busy to maybe make the connections. And when we don't make those connections to 
a larger network that has a larger you know amount of resources our students essentially lose out mm -hmm. and i would say for students who may be listening um you know it it can be a challenge to ask for help we understand that what you have to gain by asking for help is a whole world of resources that you may not have even known to ask for because you didn't even know that they existed. You know, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want supportive adults, professionals, um, your peers, you know, uh, to come alongside you, to be a part of that network for you, mm -hmm. to, you know, just have those conversations, do the checking in, and then connect you to those resources. That's great. We also have another question here, um, Veronica. The question is, what are some ways to keep up with the student's progress in the education domain to ensure success? Yeah, so as I stated before, um, progress reports. So we have, um, we send out progress reports once a semester, about midway through, just to kind of get an update on from the, pers the professor's perspective on what the student is doing. So how well they've done, um, how many quizzes or tests they've taken or missed, what their grade might be to date, um, how their attendance. And then the, the, we, we offer a space for the professor to list um, sort of some strengths that the, students ha the student has, but also where the are some areas where the student might grow. Um, so those are very, very helpful. And we, as I shared before, go over those with students. And so students gain a lot of insight and awareness from those as well. Um, so that is one of our key measures. Um, another thing um, that, that is really helpful, when a student is having some academic difficulty, um, maybe they're on academic probation or something of that nature, um, we have what we call academic recovery plans. So we go through all of the seven life domains and talk with the student about which domain was sort of a distraction from you doing well and focusing on your education domain and what can we do to get back to that being back to the central focus and so what are some action steps and what are some goals and whatever one or two domains was a, were a distraction and so those two are really really key think components of our program. Thank you for that um, answer to that question. I also just wanted to point out again how you talked about that partnering. So not only do you get those progress reports, but the students are sitting down with their coaches and going over them. Um, so they're working together in a sense of this is how you're doing, this is what's happening, now you can tell me your part and kind of putting the story all together in one. Um, so I really liked how it came back to the, that central theme of the partnership, which is the difference between the mentoring um, and the coaching process. Um, and then we really just wanted to thank all of our listeners out there for listening. Um, I also wanted to say that if you liked, you heard on this webinar and you want this to continue, um, we do have a donate now slide. Um, and then also want to talk about for those of you out there who are supportive adults, who are students, um, who are professionals, and you want more resources in the education domain, you can check out our education domain toolkit, which can be found on our webpage, um, as well as check out if you're interested in learning the Learning Center for Foster Care and Education, um, or if you're looking to just help choose the right college for you, all of this information will be on the webpage. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, Veronica, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. I, it's, it's crazy. The, the time was so short, but the discussion was so rich. Mm -hmm. And um, I think everybody out there probably had at least a couple takeaways, if not many. Um, I know that this is a webinar that I will be listening to again, just to kind of reinforce some of the things that I heard today. Think about how um, I can really help to implement those with um, the students that are in my network that we work with, um, really just to ensure that we're doing everything we can to support success in that education domain. Um, we want to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, September 20th, we have our Fostering Success Michigan Community Collaborative. This is our first community collaborative of the year. We're super excited. And we will be hosted at the MDHHS Grand Traverse County office. So. All of our community collaboratives this year will be hosted by different MDHHS offices across the, the state. So we're really looking forward to having you all there. Remember that the live streaming for this event, uh, which will be available via Facebook Live and Periscope, will occur between 2.15 and 3 p.m. Next month, October,
here is our finance and employment domain. Um, lots of activities happening with that, uh, not just within, within FSM, but really across the state. There will be a variety of FAFSA um, events, um, Michigan College Access or uh, College Application Day, all of those great events that our Michigan College Access Network partners will also be promoting. Um, but we also want you to join us again for the FSM Community Collaborative focused on finance and employment in the central region. Um, that will be on October 25th, another Wednesday, um, at the MDHHS Ingham County Grand Tower location. Uh, you can also be sure to tune in um, next month for our webinar focused on finance and employment. And at the end of this month, we're going to have a podcast I'm really excited about um, with Tamara Tuton, one of our former FSM student ambassadors and also CETA Scholar graduate, now graduate student back at Western. Um, working on her master's degree in higher education and student affairs. So that should be a really great podcast that will be released next week. So lots of great things going on at FSM. Thank you as always for joining us. Thank you for participating in this webinar. We look forward to seeing you hopefully tomorrow and if not in October. Again, a big thank you out there to all of our listeners. Um, just a reminder that this webinar recording will be available after um, on the WMU Foster Success Michigan.com website. Again, if you liked what you heard on this and you wanted to continue, uh, there is a donate now and there will be a link on this webinar after. Thank you. Take care, everyone.